Howdy ho, Maplers, and welcome to Cannon Master, the, uh, the least changed explorer pirate post-Destiny. So, obviously, they must have had it perfect the first time, right? <laughs> Honestly, playing Cannon Master, this class really is kind of perfect at what it does already. It's the monkey pirate, and goddamn does it monkey around. For the gear... As always, my Miso accessories, because if you're going to be training all these 250s, you might as well get some of your Miso back. You're never going to pay off these 250s, but hey, every little cent counts towards me not Miso farming on my Zero. <laughs> and any minutes I can spare not on the Zero are good minutes to me. Nothing too insane outside of the cannons for Cannon Master. Everything's just my normal strength pirate gear. For the inner ability, ideally you want attack speed plus one. Cannon Master is one of those classes where you can never really have enough attack speed, so you want attack speed as your prime line. However, I rolled 20 meso, and since 20 meso is best in slot for farming, I just held on to it for all of these levels. Came to be super handy. I might try to reroll this for the dojo video, but uh... No 50% off honor event, and knowing my inner ability luck, I'll probably just end up scamming myself. <laughs> For the V Matrix, you knew it was gonna be right in that first spot. Even on a class all about monkeys, Holy Symbol still reserves its first spot. EXP, drop rate. You couldn't really ask for more. It makes your monkeys even better at performing business. They get you drops, and this gives you better drops. And of course, you're an explorer pirate, meaning you're the most balanced class in the game, so you obviously deserve another holy symbol. <laughs> Loaded dice is pretty ridiculous. I have been playing a lot of pirates back to back to back recently, and yeah, Loaded Dice is still giga overpowered. This skill is dumb, and I love it because it makes life just so easy for pirates. For Cannon Master, for your boost nodes, there are six skills you want to boost, but before I go into this, I want to heavily emphasize when you're doing your boost nodes on Cannon Master, there are a lot of worthless skills. So, while you're opening your nodes, be sure to keep track of all of your good primary trios and make a spreadsheet to pick and choose combinations so you get your four trios down. This definitely isn't a class you want to be searching for perfect trios for style points. No, 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 none of that. But for your six skills, you want Monkey Militia, Monkey Fury, which also comes with their new skill in Destiny, Monkey Mortar, Anchors Away, Rolling Rainbow, Cannon Barrage, and Cannon Bazooka. Those cover all of your useful skills without having any leftovers on like second or third job skills that are just wastes of space and uh i would heavily prioritize monkey militia and anchors away because oh boy these duders are your mobbing skills cannon bazooka's got good base damage phantom can train with the thing you don't need to boost it right away monkey militia has pretty low base damage, but you can put a hyper point in it to get a third monkey to add on more monkeys to help it mob a little better, but you still need to boost it ASAP so it's able to one or two shot your your mobs. And then anchors away, surprisingly enough, I didn't really expect this coming into the class, anchors away is actually an insanely strong summon ability. This thing does need to be boosted, but for a single line of damage, this thing is going to be one-shotting way before Monkey Militia even gets to that point. It's very, very good. And then for the V-Skills, in their order of importance in my eyes. First off, Poolmaker. Dude, honestly, I'm so glad I didn't do Cannon Master before they got Poolmaker, because I have no idea how this class keeps their summons in line without just like watching their cooldowns if it wasn't for Poolmaker. This skill is perfect, dude. This is the ideal skill you want to pop when you're hopping around replacing all your summons and looting the map. It's a 60 second cooldown, it does good mobbing, it does good damage for bossing, 
And you get these little supply crates that give you a damage percent buff when you press the up arrow key on the chest, which are sorta handy. They're not insanely powerful, but for a 60 second cooldown, this skill is really, really good. Like, I don't know how this class would functionally maintain its current level of uptime on mobbing without Poolmaker. Monkey business is nice, but that's a two minute cooldown and all of your summons are 60 second duration. So there would definitely be interludes where without Poolmaker, you're just not getting mob kills because you gotta go around and replace your summons. But with Poolmaker, by golly, when you're replacing your summons, you're, you're getting triple fold here. You're getting mob kills, you're looting while you replace your summons, and you're refreshing all your summon durations. And by the time you get around replacing everything, Poolmaker comes to an end. It's like they handcrafted this thing to be perfect for Cannon Master's rotations. I love this skill. It's easily my favorite for Cannon Master. And then the second most important skill for Cannon Master, and of course their most iconic, the Cannon of Mass Destruction. The big bullet bills, if you please. These dudes are okay. They're decent mobbing, they have really good hitboxes, and uh, their charge time isn't actually that bad. I thought coming into this, these would be more difficult to maintain, since they do have a fairly large charge time of 25 seconds each, but in conjunction with stuff like Poolmaker, Rolling Rainbow, Monkey Business, as long as you're rotating these and you're not just spamming them willy-nilly while you're mobbing, their uptime is well, damn near 100%. It's really, really nice. And of course, good damage for bossing. They also added a nice quality of life thing for these, where if you hold the down arrow key and then press the skill, you automatically instantly throw out all, th all of your prepared cannonballs. So your burst is quicker and it does a load of damage. Only downside, if you're in something like Dojo where you need to be doing damage constantly, just waiting for triple bullets can take a while. <laughs> <laughs> Since just waiting for the charge on all the bullets adds up to over a minute, pretty much you're going to be waiting for like 15 seconds on these alone. Either that or you can just throw two out and then just throw the third when you get it. And then the skill I hate the most, but I see it's necessary, the nuclear option. It's your iframe, and it's a, a good enough mobbing tool that it fills some gaps where a Lucid Soul just doesn't do enough damage. This skill, I I don't, I don't like how it works. There is a long, 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 atrociously long startup animation to this skill, where you just have to sit there and wait for your person to put the cannon on their shoulder. And I don't know if it's server-sided or what, but this thing feels horrible. Because it's not only the pickup animation for the cannon, you then have to wait for the cannon to snap into reality on your shoulder so you can aim it and then fire. It's just stupid how long it takes. And it's even worse because if you let go of the key early, the skill goes on full cooldown and you don't get the mobbing benefit because, of course, it's an iframe. They have to account for it being used for like one split second. They're not just going to refund you the full cooldown after you've iframed. <laughs> oh, I hate this skill so much. It's really useful since you can direct where the nuke goes. You can effectively just lob this thing off screen and mob on parts of the map where you're not. It's really, really nice. The damage on this is fairly good as well. It might be low base damage, but the tick rate on the nuclear fallout is quite fast. Meaning a majority of the time I would just lay this over top of my Lucid Soul because being a pirate, my Lucid Soul doesn't really do damage. So all she's doing is really making mobs angry so they walk towards me and then they walk through the fallout and the fallout kills them. When it works, it's fantastic. It's great. When it doesn't work, I hate this skill <laughs> because it's 30 seconds where I'm losing mob uptime on my overall rotation and I just have to wait to try again. I failed this thing like three or four times in a row, multiple times, and it never gets any better. Like I said, I don't know if it's server-sided or what, but it feels incredibly janky when you just prop this thing up on your shoulder for the animation, and then there's a wait of like a quarter second, and then the cannon snaps into existence so you can actually use the thing. It's so dumb. And then the final skill, 
monkey business. This is effectively your burst ability. These little dudes are also really good at mobbing because you summon three monkeys and all of them mob almost better than you do. <laughs> so for their entire duration, they are fantastic. This is a great skill to use in conjunction with Rolling Rainbow to give your cannonballs extra time to recharge for your mobbing rotations. As well, this is like your primary burst outside of the cannonballs. All of these little monkeys, Roy, Maxi, and Khaki, oh my god, they do some good damage. Like, Cannon Master's burst for its longest cooldown being two minutes is pretty darn ridiculous. <laughs> Between Overdrive, Pirate's Banner, and all of your Vs and all of your Cannon Master V skills, you do a lot of damage on some low, low cooldowns. It's kind of no surprise this class didn't receive too many sweeping changes in the Destiny update. They really did get it right the first time here. And then of course, the V skills, the decent skills. Decent speed infusion and decent sharp eyes, bonus attack speed, like I said, Cannon Master can never have enough attack speed, and bonus crit rate and crit damage. Who doesn't want that? And then of course, True Arachnid's Reflection. You get it for completing the Will storyline. Decent mobbing, decent bossing. Since you're a pirate, your Lucid Soul is not going to do a whole lot. You can use this to overlay on top of Lucid Soul. Or for my primary use, when I actually threw it on moving into Celis, I just set this in like the least congested part of the map because it's not the best mobbing tool, but it's good enough to clear out those pesky spots in the map where you don't ideally want to be. Ooh, lad. All right, Cannon Master. I'll preface this mobbing by, uh, Cannon Master is pretty crazy at mobbing. <laughs> oh god, this class is definitely keeping up with the mechanics and the kanas in the game on Frenzied Spawn because, oh man, these monkeys are here to do some business and that business is kill rate. For 200 until 205, you have the classics, Eastern Cave Path 2 or Below the Cave, choose your favorite. I always go to Eastern Cave Path 2, since it's slightly less popular, it's easier to find a map. Now, for here, you always want to start off with Poolmaker while you're setting off your cooldowns. If you have her, Lucid Soul on this side, if not, just Rolling Rainbow, and then you'll want to hop over to this side, drop your anchor on the top, drop Monkey Militia on the bottom, and they'll effectively take care of that. If you do a delayed flash jump, you can double plat on these, or you can just throw a cannonball through it, and then you mob on these shorter platforms if you don't have a Lucid Soul. And uh, by golly, you're gonna be full clearing. About as full clearing as you can get for <laughs> Lantern Erdos, since they have their delayed actual deaths, but it's really, really good. You're gonna blitz through these levels super, super fast and get immediately into a much, much better area. For 205 until 215, or honestly, you can stay here until 220 if your mobs are one shot, if your summons are one shotting here and not in Yum Yum Island. Hidden Underground Train. This map works out better for Cannon Master because the platforms are more linear, they're flatter, so you can actually double plat with Cannon Bazooka. Throw your anchor up here on this top left, or you can use Monkey Militia, it's up to you. Use your other summon on the other top platform, and then by golly, you could just flash jump through, but where's the fun in that? We want maximum mobbing, right? Stand here under the rope, throw your cannonballs over to the left side, you'll stand or on the right side, you'll stand on the left of the rope and jump and cannon bazooka there. About the time the cannonball gets off screen, you turn and throw your second cannon. Once again, as soon as it's getting off screen, turn and throw the cannonball. When Poolmaker's up, that's your timer to go reset your summons. Hop back up, reset anchor. While you're jumping around replacing your summons, Poolmaker will be keeping the mob kills up for you. And then you're down here, you're low on cannonballs, you cycle in a rolling rainbow, and you just continue to shoot to the left. Once rolling rainbow is done, you can use cannonballs again, that'll make it to the next pool maker, rinse repeat, instead of rolling rainbow next time, you use monkey business. It's literally that easy, <laughs> and you're gonna maintain some of the best kill rate in the game. Cannon Master! A good way to look at Cannon Master is you know about mechanic, right? Well, what if you took the robots out of mechanic and gave them monkeys instead? <laughs> 
and then lowered the ceiling of or lowered the floor of funding by about half. Cannon Master is effectively a cheaper mechanic. It doesn't have the maximum possible mobbing potential that a mechanic does, but the funding required to get insane mob rate mob kills per hour out of this class is dramatically lower. Its summons are all really, really strong. <laughs> and then for 215 until 220. Well, of course, it was going to be Hidden Illiard Field. It's always Hidden Illiard Field. This map is pretty much the best you can get for this level range, so long as you can actually kill the mobs. For here, much like the Hidden Underground train, you're going to want to focus on this top platform for your summons, Monkey Militia on one side, Anchor on the other, and then, just like in the last map, Separate the map in half, one half for your cannonballs, the other half for you with cannon bazooka, and then just a light jump and a shot of your bazooka later, and by golly, <laughs> full map clear is literally the same rotation. You just split the map in half, your summons take one side, you take the other. It's really, really smooth and it's really efficient. These levels will fly by. Like, Cannon Master was pumping almost 90 bill an hour out of this map, which is close to its, like, maximum potential on Frenzied Spawn. It got me into Latchlin really, really fast. And then, of course, Latchlin. I really, really wanted the OS2 map to work for Cannon Master, but it feels like the map is heavily restricted to actually having a one-shotting Lucid Soul. Your summons do enough damage to maintain the right side of the map, but you just don't have enough coverage unless you're willing to like forego boost nodes at this level range so that you can have the nuclear option for these areas. But generally, I just decided, nah, people are probably going to need these boost nodes for their final damage by the time they get to Latchlin. So I decided against using the nuclear option here and waited until I was in Arcana to start throwing it into the rotation because it's really needed in Arcana. <laughs> so, the best map for the lowest amount of funding, Rev Place 3. You could also go to Occupy Dance Floor 1 if you're on Wild Totem spawn speed or just base spawn. This map feels insanely good for a Cannon Master to just rotate around in a simple rotation. Set your Monkey Militia in the top right, set your Anchor in the top left, you just jump along the bottom, use your up jump to shoot the middle every now and again, and it's really, really smooth. But Rev 3. This map sort of requires a Lucid Soul, but at the same time, it really doesn't. It's more so just a quality of life feature. Up here in this top corner is where you're going to want to set your Monkey Militia. Then you want to hop, skip and jump over to the house. This is where you're going to set the Anchor. The Anchor can actually pull the enemies in the very corner of the map, so it's ideal since stuff will not clump up in the corner. Now if you have her, Lucid on the base of the house, so that she's going to hit the mobs over there and make them jump to you. And then just like Hidden or Iliard Field, split the map in half. Throw your cannonballs in one direction, then you stand here, just short jump. Once your cannonball gets off screen, turn and throw the next one, and then just jump like this. And as always, when Poolmaker is coming up, you'll toss on a Poolmaker, hop up, Cycle Anchor or Monkey Militia, they both work on either summoning spot, so if you mess up the rotation of your summons, it's not going to matter that much. Cannon Master is just cool like that. And then, before Poolmaker even ends, you're back in the middle, split the map again, throw your cannonballs, rolling rainbow, monkey business, whatever you gotta fill the mobbing space. It's really efficient. Here, you might not have space for Monkey Militia depending on how many boost nodes you have, so when you're out of cannonballs, just jump attacking left and right is good enough. It's more key presses, so it's a little bit more active, but in a pinch when you need that extra damage from your boost nodes, you can just jump attack left and right. But in doing so, you're not getting anything to mob all the way over here on the house. So just make sure you hop over and shoot a cannon bazooka, or just use your cannonballs on cooldown to throw it over to the left side, because these little dudes will make it all the way over to the left side of the map. Nothing's going to clump up over on the bottom platform down there. And this will carry you on into 230. Honestly, I wouldn't even recommend our spirits. Rev 3's kill rate is bonkers, dude. Over 30k easily. <laughs> it's ridiculously good. 
and just like Earth Spirits just cannot keep up with that level of clear. The layout isn't quite as conductive to your summons. So, from there, your next best area is a little bit high leveled for this range, but really the map is so ridiculously good I wouldn't recommend anything else. Even while under leveled, you're going to be pulling better EXP here so long as you can actually kill the mobs than any other Arcana map. And that is deepest part of the Cavern Upper Path. This map's great. This is where I trained the mech, so it was the first place I thought of for Cannon Master. As always, when you're placing summons, start with Poolmaker. That's your summon timer. Throw your anchor from that platform onto the little platform. Then you drop your monkey militia there in the middle. Lucid Soul will go on this left side, just like on Mechanic. She's not there to kill things, she's more so there to aggro things. And then you'll be standing about right here. From here, you can just angle your nuclear option up slightly and you can lob it over onto Lucid's platform without ever having to go over there. And then, just like before, you throw a bullet to one side and then you shoot the other side. Right as the bullet's getting off screen, follow it with another bullet. Shoot it off screen. You want to maintain your bullets and save some charges? Work in a rolling rainbow instead, then just keep on shooting. You want to do this? Just wait for your poolmaker cooldown. Use the nuclear option on cooldown because its uptime isn't 100%. It's like 20 seconds uptime, 30 seconds downtime. So just cast it as soon as it's available. Then poolmaker is up. That's your timer to go back around the map. You get enough time on Poolmaker to slowly walk your way through these platforms, looting everything while you replace your summons, and you're not going to miss out on many mob kills. Drop down, place Lucid, nuclear options coming up, you can just quick charge it so you don't have to angle it at all, it'll line up perfectly with the edge of that platform, and then you're right back here in the middle. Say you're out of bullets, just cycle in a monkey business. They'll more than clear all of the mobs behind you, so you can just shoot in one direction. Now if you don't have a lucid soul, you can set your monkey militia on this platform here, but what you'll need to do then is you're going to have to have your monkey mortars unlocked so that you can just clear this platform above you with monkey mortars. You also want to have it on a hotkey so you can see your charges for this skill. But if you don't have a lucid soul, that's your summon rotation. Just move monkey militia onto the left platform and then clear the mobs that aren't getting one shot by the anchor with your monkey mortars. This map is ridiculous and honestly, if you can't one shot or it's one, in, one or two shot in Celis, Stay here until 250. Honestly, you can stay here until 255. This map pulls insane kill rates. I was pushing upwards of 155 billy XP per hour, which the only characters that got close to that were Mech and Laura, with Mech being slightly lower and Laura being, you know, a lot higher. <laughs> But really, that map is more than good enough to take you all the way to 250, and the funding required isn't that high. When I entered that area, I was hovering around like 18k strength, and even then, my anchor was already one-shotting with its max boost nodes. My monkey militia was guaranteed two-shotting. It's really, really cost-efficient and quick to get to 250 in that Arcana map. It's very, very good. But if you have the extra damage... And if you're feeling adventurous, <laughs> we're moving to Laura territory, baby. It's not quite as good as Laura. It's it's just not. Cannon Master is a fantastic mobber, but he's 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 no Laura. <laughs> but PD5 actually pulls some really good rates. Primarily, this map will out uh, like get better EXP out of it than your deepest upper path, just because you'll eventually outlevel the bonus EXP range for deepest upper path. But much like every other map on on Cannon Master, you're gonna start your rotation with Poolmaker, triple cannon jump up to the very top, anchor on the top platform, monkey militia on this platform, lucid soul below monkey militia, and nuclear option on top of the lucid soul then you're gonna stand here by this portal jump and throw a bullet bill you have to do it somewhere near the top of the jump otherwise the bullet's not going to reach the second platform once it's off screen jump and throw the second one since you're in celis you have your will skill take the portal drop the will skill drop back down 
When you're low on bullets and you want to use Monkey Militia, you need to actively move around this bottom platform. You don't have to go very far. Like I said before, Monkey Militia almost mobs better than you do. These guys have a ridiculous range, and since there's three of them, they attack pretty quick. Just hop, skip, and jungle, jump along the bottom while they're up, and they'll pretty much full clear. All the time they're up, don't use any bullets because you're using the time that they're up to recharge your bullets for further rotations. Poolmaker comes off cooldown, drop it, jump up, loot the platform, drop down, drop your monkey militia, drop down, lucid soul, charge up nuclear option, drop the nuke, and before Poolmaker expires, you can get around to the left side, and as you're jumping back, Poolmaker will finally fade. Jump up, throw a cannonball, or if you're still waiting on cannonballs, just throw a rolling rainbow off to the side. And whoo lad, even though it's not 100% full clearing, I was very surprised how efficient PD5 actually ended up being. A lot of the problems PD5 has for Frenzied Spawn is the map is just ridiculously large. It's hard to efficiently get around it to maintain your mobbing as well as looting. Bunches of classes can clear the map easily on Frenzied Spawn, something like a Night Lord, a Night Walker, a Shadower. They can clear it, sure, but they can't loot while clearing it. If you go around and loot, which you really should be because looting's vital to keeping you, your, your wallet healthy, they lose a lot of mobbing in doing so. Whereas someone as summon heavy as Cannon Master or Laura can maintain their mob kills while looting. And that's the key to making a really big map work on Frenzy. You need to be able to keep your kills up while also doing your loot cycles. Of course, having a vac pet will definitely make it easier, but as you saw, all of these rotations are pretty conducive to just normal pets. Because Poolmaker's only a minute cooldown, you're never getting large swaths of items on the ground, like a, a Zero or a Kana farming an LH6. There's not just massive piles of things for your pets to sort through, so even just basic pets have more than enough time to loot everything on the platform before you move to the next one to replace your summons. It feels great. It's really, <laughs> it's really, really cozy to train on a Cannon Master. This class just feels like it was optimized and molded into being like the beginner friendly summon class. Cannon Master is like a smoother version of Battle Mage almost, where your summons are really, really strong and they have really good mobbing. Just this class has a little bit better uptime with its summons, less worrying about cycling or waiting on cooldowns. It's great. I love it. <laughs> the monkey class exceeded my expectations. And if this class got the least changes of the explorers, that only says good things about the other explorers. Obviously, I've seen a bunch of buccaneer gameplay, so that one's going to be a cakewalk. You just dash jump, dude. But apparently, Cannon Master and Corsair are both very similar in their mobbing potential as summon classes. So I'm really looking forward to the other Explorer Pirates, but we're not doing any more or no more Pirates for a little while. We've had it easy for too long, dude. Loaded Dice is making me soft. <laughs> this skill's way too overpowered. I gotta, I gotta do something non-Pirate or else I'm gonna lose myself to these ludicrous EXP rates. For the bossing for Cannon Master, Dude, I really don't have too many complaints in the bossing department. Really, it's just the new killer option. This skill is just really clunky. I don't know how it made it through Destiny without seeing changes to how ridiculously slow it feels. But again, it could just be a client-sided problem, and this is just Spectrum destroying my enjoyment of this skill. As it is, it's a very salvageable iframe. Does decent burst damage, so you can just drop this in Dream Defender for a nice big burst while you're clearing floors, or on like dojo bosses while you wait for them to spawn, prep bazooka, drop it, big burst. It's really nice. I just wish it was smoother. Mm. The change to make it so you can actually throw all of your bullets all at once just by holding the down arrow and casting the skill is ridiculous for their quality of life. 
I did a few I did a few dojo runs before I learned you can press down and throw your bullets and holy moly it's a lot slower throwing these bad boys one at a time. There's a noticeable gap between these things if you're just holding the key down to throw them as quick as you can. So it's really nice that they made it so you can just quickly chuck every single one while you're bursting. Just makes your burst that much quicker and that much more impactful. See, this class also has some pretty ridiculous mobility for as good as <laughs> as good as Cannon Master is at bossing and mobbing. Not only that, they just thought, ah, fuck it, let's make it really good at moving too. You effectively got a quadruple flash jump. Yeah, oh yeah. Effectively, it's a triple flash jump, but you can make it a quadruple flash jump if you start with your up jump. Because then you can just do up jump, flash jump, up jump, up jump. You get three up jumps and a flash jump. You just have to start from a grounded position. Otherwise, it's just flash jump, up jump, up jump. So you get effectively a triple flash jump. And whoo lad, you'll be trucking while you do this too. Because Cannon Master is fast. This class has an overshooting problem. If you miss your platform, you're going to miss it by a country mile. You're not just going to barely overshoot it. You're going to fly way past it. I sort of wish this class was a double flash jump type of class so it would have some chance of recovering if you overshoot your location. It does have like a blowback skill which you can use to like barely nudge yourself in bosses for many movement purposes but it doesn't stop you from flying past your, fly, flying past your designated location. But that's just a get good mechanic right? You'll eventually understand and get a feel for the the physics here on the monkey class, so that's not really that much of a problem. As I said in the beginning, the boost nodes are really bad for Cannon Master. Absolutely bust out a spreadsheet for this one. There are a lot of useless skills. And like besides these six, you don't want any of the other skills boosted. They're just bad. <laughs> like why would you want cannon jump boosted? That's not a bossing skill. Why would you want blast back boosted? You only use that for movement. Well, why Why would you want cannon spike? It's just a worse cannon bazooka. It's like the Hayato problem, but on an actual KMS class. So it's pretty scuffed there. But if you're making a spreadsheet, if you're, if you're saving all of your good trios that you could use, you can eventually piecemeal something together in usually less than like 300 or 400 nodes. You can get six covered on four trios. They might not be the prettiest trios, but with a class like this, you gotta do everything you can to cut the cost a little bit. I thought at the start when I was coming into Cannon Master that your rotations would be a lot more gimmicky. It's sort of like mechanic where I needed the relentless assault boost node or specialty node, sorry, to actually maintain 100% uptime on its summons. But I was very happy to learn Poolmaker existed because this skill fills all the gaps you could possibly have with this class. It's it's really really good. A minor nitpick for Cannon Master: if you don't like lines covering your entire screen. You can either turn Buckshot off while bombing, it is a very small damage increase to have Buckshot on, or you can turn on Cascading Damage Numbers if it gets too much of a problem for you. Or just pop out a unit damage skin. This makes the lines much more manageable and small. Don't use something like a big damage skin or it's literally going to cover your entire screen. <laughs> oh man. Cannon Master was a great first step into the Explorer Pirates. Like I said, it didn't ex it didn't receive very many changes. Barely got any at all, for that matter. Just a lot of a lot of touch-ups to its to its aesthetics and its design. And by God, I love its new aesthetic. Everything on this class looks so good. The color palette is beautiful. All the animations are nice and smooth. I love it. The voice, the voice lines might not be to everyone's taste, but I think it's just manic enough to fill the energy that a class who literally gives monkeys heavy artillery weapons, it fills the gap that they need for that. But that's pretty much been Cannon Master. Like I said, Loaded Dice is making me soft. We're going to do something a little bit more difficult for the next one. We're stepping back into the magician's shoes. The 
Earth magician shoes. It's Kinesis time, which means Ilium is bench warming as the fourth locked in final T50. The only choice now is which of the final explorer pirates is going to be left for the final five. But that's been Cannon Master. If you have any questions about training Cannon Master, about playing it, bossing with it, or heck, just playing Maple Story in general, feel free to ask in the comments. I make it a point to answer any and all questions these videos get because I love this game. I like helping people out. A lot of people don't really know how to efficiently test out and find the best rotations for their class, which is why you see Kana's and CLP. <laughs> so these videos are pretty helpful for some people. And as always, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.